Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. McCain left behind a letter to America before to be read now after he's gone. As the now late Senator John McCain, Azar, is mourned and eulogized since his weekend passing, many talking heads in the mainstream media have been quick to canonize him as some sort of warrior statesman, the great warrior politician worthy of emulation as some sort of secular civic saint. There were two John McCains. One was the fictional, well-curated political image of a straight-talking, principled maverick war hero who disdained politics and partisanship in favor of doing he believed was the right thing. This is image being eulogized and propagated by the mainstream media currently. That other image of John McCain that lived in a little place called reality, was a warmongering political hack that seemingly parroted whatever media talking point was expedient at the moment, often to the detriment of the American people. One of President Donald Trump's harshest critics and instrumental in the appointment of special counsel Robert Mueller, he hand-delivering the salacious and fictional Steele dossier to former FBI Director James Comey, leading the charge into the investigation into collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia in the 2016 presidential election. This dossier was used as the basis for the FISA warrants that were used to spy on the Trump campaign and a host of additional government malfeasance in a concerted effort to overthrow a duly elected American president. As they often do, the media attempts to whitewash and gloss over unfavorable attributes if the person is deemed to be useful in pushing the narrative of the moment. McCain is currently useful to the media, even in death, due to his abject hatred of all things Trump. Yet as the media often does as the propagate works of fiction, they seem to forget that research is not just a one-way street and not all of us have short memories. In fact, some of us still remember when the media hated all things McCain during the 2008 presidential election when McCain was running against former President Barack Obama. However, as is often said, facts do not care about feelings and accuracy matters. Many have noted throughout the years of McCain's lengthy political career, it was significantly marked by jarring flip-flops and malleable principles. He was opposed to former President George W. Bush's NSA wiretap program before he supported it. He defended the estate tax before he harshly criticized it. He vaguely opposed torture but undermined legislative efforts to stop it. He claimed opposition to the current head of the CIA-Gina Haspel during the nomination process, yet supported the former head of the CIA-John Brennan for the exact same policies. He embraced Social Security privatization before saying otherwise, twice. McCain also caused much bitterness and animosity amongst the American people when he chose to return to the Senate in July 2017 after emergency brain surgery to become the deciding vote that killed the GOP's repeal of the Affordable Care Act. Some would simply dismiss all that saying that positions evolve over time. While that is true to some degree, most career politicians do not carefully craft their entire image around that of being principled and honest merely to shift like the sand with regards to the cause of the moment in a seemingly arbitrary fashion. Now it seems McCain is not quite done with the American people, reaching out posthumously from the grave to speak to Americans one last time. The Atlantic Report Stash On Monday morning in Arizona, Senator John McCain's former campaign manager Rick Davis, acting as a spokesperson for the McCain family, read aloud the text of the late senator's final letter to the public. These are John's words, he said. What follows is a transcription of what Davis read. My fellow Americans, whom I have gratefully served for 60 years, and especially my fellow Arizonians, thank you for the privilege of serving you, and for the rewarding life that service in uniform and in public office has allowed me to lead. I've tried to serve our country honorably. I've made mistakes, but I hope my love for America will be weighed favorably against them. I've often observed that I am the luckiest person on earth. I feel that way even now, as I prepare for the end of my life. I've loved my life, all of it. I've had experiences, adventures, friendships, enough for ten satisfying lives, and I am so thankful. Like most people, I have regrets. But I would not trade a day of my life in good or bad times for the best day of anybody else's. I owe this satisfaction to the love of my family. One man has never had a more loving wife or children he was prouder of than I am of mine. And I owe it to America to be connected to America's causes, liberty, equal justice, and respect for the dignity of all people brings happiness more sublime than life's fleeting pleasures. Our identities and sense of worth were not circumscribed, but are enlarged by serving good causes bigger than ourselves. Fellow Americans, that association has meant more to me than any other. I lived and died a proud American. We are citizens of the world's greatest republic, a nation of ideals, not blood and soil. We are blessed and are a blessing to humanity when we uphold and advance those ideals at home and in the world. 
We have helped liberate more people from tyranny and poverty than ever before in history, and we have acquired great wealth and power in the progress. We weaken our greatness when we confuse our patriotism with tribal rivalries that have sown resentment and hatred and violence in all the corners of the globe. We weaken it when we hide behind walls, rather than tear them down, when we doubt the power of our ideals, rather than trust them to be the great force for change they have always been. We are 325 million opinionated, vociferous individuals. We argue and compete and sometimes even vilify each other in our raucous public debates. But we have always had so much more in common with each other than in disagreement. If only we remember that and give each other the benefit of the presumption that we all love our country, we will get through these challenging times. We will come through them stronger than before, we always do. Ten years ago I had the privilege to concede defeat in the election for president. I want to end my farewell to you with heartfelt faith in Americans that I felt so powerfully that evening. I feel it powerfully still. Do not despair of our present difficulties. We believe always in the promise and greatness of America because nothing is inevitable here. Americans never quit, we never surrender, we never hide from history. We make history. Farewell fellow Americans, God bless you, and God bless America. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like, and subscribe. Thank you.